Hi, welcome to my channel. This is Engelgeist. If you're new, thank you for tuning in. Uh, welcome. And if you are returning, thank you for coming back. This is the daily forecast for um, this Saturday, February 22nd. We're talking about 222, 2020, which basically is 22. So we're talking about, what is that? Five twos in a row. So it's kind of a funky angel number. Not funky, but it's a definite like big play on the 222 energy. So be aware of that today. There's been some interesting energy all this week. We have that. Pisces, uh, Mercury retrograde. Mercury's in Pisces going retrograde, which means lots of emotions coming up for people. Lots of psychic stuff. Lots of room for sort of probably misinterpreting things or misconstruing things at a psychic level or an emotional level. Um, so be aware of that. My name is Dan and this is my channel. I do a daily forecast for the Greater Collective. If this is showing up to you guys on a date that's not the 22nd of February, don't worry. This message will still be valid as it is for the highest good of all who watch it whenever they cho choose to watch it. But ideally it is set up for those of us that are following the forecast every day. Um, so don't turn it off if you hear that it's February 22nd and then in the middle of September. This message very well may be for you and apply to your life, okay? Those of you that want to support, uh, support the channel, feel free to do so. You can follow me at Instagram at Engelgeist333. You can go to my Facebook business page and like me there or follow me there. And you would message me at either of those two places if you're interested in a private reading, okay? Uh, those are available to you and I can answer any questions. They're done over the phone or Facebook. Um, through Facebook, comments or via Facebook. Uh, what else? Uh, you can also sell, uh, subscribe to my Patreon page. Patreon has the uh, daily forecast a day early. Plus, there's also other special readings and things as I fill up with subscription subscribers. I will be adding more and more material over there. Um, but there's readings that are available over there. They're only available over there if you subscribe. So that's available to you too. And the name is Engelgeist for the Patreon. So those are all ways of supporting the channel. Also, you'll notice in my video descriptions, there are links to the decks that I use. If you like any of the decks that I use, feel free to use my Amazon affiliate links. Those will give me a small portion of the sale if you choose to buy the deck for yourself or for a gift for someone else. A small portion of the sale will go to me through Amazon affiliates program. Um, and it helps the channel too. So that's available. I think that's it. So let's get into the energy. What do you really want us to know for the 22nd of February, 2-22-2020? I like the flow of that number. Beautiful. So we have the Two of Swords. A little bit of indecision, guys. A little bit of maybe not feeling like we see all of the answers. A little bit of sort of feeling a little bit caught in our mind, caught in our ideas. This feels a little bit softer than some of the cards that we've been dealing with this week. It was interesting. We kicked off the week on Sunday. Can you guys not be doing this right now? Um, sorry, that's my dogs. Um, so we kicked off the beginning of this week with a really kind of good reading. I, I, I feel like it was a great reading. And I feel like somewhere in the week something went south. I, mean, I think it's the retrograde, to be honest, not to blame everything on the planets and sound like a complete and total hippie, but I really do think the retrograde kicked off this week, and that maybe threw off some of the energy of what we were seeing. We had that midweek card of the artist, which was the only major arcana card, I believe, that we saw this week, correct? Let me just double check that, because I write them all down. Indeed, it was the only... No, we had the tower in the early part of the week, so, you know, I wonder when the retrograde on the 17th. I wonder when the what, retrograde actually kicked off. Was it the 17th? Because that might have been when we got those two towers. So anyways, regardless, I feel like something has shifted. I feel like this two of swords does say to me that we are getting back to our centered self. And the reason why I say that is 
She is seated and sort of in meditation. She is blindfolded, so maybe we can't see everything clearly for what it is. We might be overthinking things, but I do feel like there is this essence of sort of meditation happening here. Like, we are going to find the answer if we don't feel as though we already have it. These swords are crossed with her, right? So in some ways, they're sort of protecting her, but sometimes our thoughts can, or our fears, our self-doubts, we can use them thinking that they're actually protecting us when they're enabling us to not make a decision about something. Did you hear that or do I need to repeat that? Sometimes our fears or our self-doubts, can, we can think that we're using them as a form of protection, but they're actually enabling us to not make a decision or make a move forward. And I feel like that's maybe a little bit of this card, right? So I think that we looked at that Seven of Cups yesterday, which was definitely about the emotions, and then we had that Ten of Swords. So to me, this feels like there is a little bit of needing to go inward, a little bit of uh, needing to sort of release our thoughts, and just kind of, I mean, this is more advice than a reading, guys, but what I want to say with this card is, like, pick a lane and stick in it, you know? Like, at a certain point, we have to just trust ourselves and what we know, trust our own internal knowledge, trust our own spirit, and pick a pick a selection, pick a channel and listen to the damn song, as they say. Um, we don't necessarily need to always know the outcome. We don't necessarily need to always have the full-on plan in our head to be able to move forward, okay? And I feel like she might be waiting for that or trying to find that, and there might be a struggle involved. Like, we might be, some of us might be meditating too hard or trying to go too far inward and getting frustrated with ourselves because it just doesn't, the answer doesn't come or we don't feel like, and that's, again, those those two swords crossing us. It's our, our mind maybe judging us because we're not feeling like we're acting spiritual enough or we're not, you know, we did something where we made a mistake and so we're not letting ourselves up about that mistake. This is where the mind is sort of like, I want to say kind of conflicting with us. What I do want to say about twos is they always make me think of companionship, like, or um, couplings, right? So I do feel like this is us being able to sort of come to this understanding of how our mind works or where our thoughts aren't serving us, and we will get clear on that, and a decision will get made, and we will be able to ultimately move forward um, at some point. So this process does need to take place, and it is actually a beneficial process. It just might be a little bit of a pain in the ass. I do want to acknowledge this small sliver of the moon back here, which is the intuitive mind to me, and it's like sort of hovering over the back side of her. And it's funny, I'm getting this sort of mediumship vibe from this a little bit. But, um, and then I just noticed too, there's this lake behind her, which we had that Seven of Cups yesterday, which would all be about water energy and the emotions. To me, it feels like we might have actually gotten beyond some of the, the card that we felt yesterday with the, all of the emotions and taming of that dragon, um, that, that placid lake behind her makes me feel like, okay, we've moved beyond that. Now we're at this place of, okay, a crossroads, which thought do we choose? Which way do we hold ourselves in our space? And we have to maybe go inward a little bit, not feel like we have all of the clear answers, and still move forward with that, utilizing our intuition and our own internal strength to do so. And that's a gift, right, ultimately. It may not feel like so comfortable, but as we practice it and we get better at it, we start to trust our own spirit. We start to move on those impulses or those urges. We maybe don't necessarily access the logical mind. We let our spirit be our guide. And maybe sometimes things might feel scary or illogical. And that's what, where we might get conflicted and where we might fear making this decision. Okay, but I do feel like this is, feels like we're, um, for the majority of us that are watching, it's going to uh, help us define our answer. Right? We're going to find our answer because we're just going to have to move. She can't stay put here forever. We know that. Now, let's see what's in the Work Your Light card. Okay, this is no. Wait, postpone, pause, say no. Now this card came up, where did this card come up? I think this came up at the beginning of the week, guys. So at the, at the Sunday card, so it's funny that it's showing back up at the very end of the week, reminding us, where is this no in our life? Where are we going backwards? I keep, every time I see this card, I look at this road heading back to this sort of uh, lightning storm and clouds, and I feel like we don't want to go backwards. 
So when I look at this, and it's interesting, we have this purple sky here, and we have this purple sky here. This no to me feels like, um, let me just look at this for one moment. I really feel like we're too much in our head and we need to get back to this pyramid is making me think of the breath work. For those of you that are new, I was doing some breath work. If you watch at the beginning of the video, there's a pyramid that gets placed at the beginning of each of the daily horoscope or forecast videos that is indicative of the breath work that we were doing that my regular viewers know about and hopefully are partaking or doing when they are in doubt. And I feel like there's a cloud in front of the triangle. There's a cloud in front of the breath work. There is sort of knowledge to be had here. There's an illumination, there's lightning, there's lightning strikes, there's flashes of awareness. But it's like if we continue to go backwards or we continue to sort of not um, to go back to old patterns, old beliefs, old thoughts, we're just gonna serve, it's gonna serve to stick us, confuse us, conflict us, that sort of thing. We need to follow our intuition and do the breath work. We need to sort of clear away the clouds. Trust the scary stuff, this sort of lightning thing. This now is about like, um, if we're looking for this decision around something, now's not the time. Um, I don't want to tell you guys a flat out no on whatever you're thinking because I don't think that that's wise. I feel like there's this idea that you guys need to realize that you can trust yourselves. But you have to get within yourselves and get within your intuition, get out of your like sort of logical mind or, or your thoughts, your fears, your self-doubts. That's where the no comes in here. I feel like that's what clouds here. These are like maybe even, you know, this illumination, these like lightning strikes, these could be like shots of self-doubt that come striking down. We need to not listen to those things right now. As I just said, run towards the illumination. But there, I, I think that there is, there is like, I want to say these lightning bolts, they strike and they, they could be self-doubt and fear, right? But they also awaken us to the fact that, that they are what they are. They awaken us to the fact they do cast light, right? Even though they may be scary or harmful, they cast light and they wake us up. They help us to realize better who we are, who we need to be, who we want to become, who, what's really within us. And we need to find that. That's this big, beautiful pink pyramid. Oh, girl, show me your pink pyramid. But, you know, that's this beautiful pink pyramid behind it, like reaching up to the sky. We need, oh, I love how that just clicked in. That was Karen sending me a comment. Interesting. Hi, Karen. So, um, in that very moment when I was saying that. So, I don't want anybody to think this is like, do not, like, this no is like, no, don't do it. This no is about sort of like making real sure that what you're doing, you're 100% sure you need to be doing it right now. Okay? Let me get the grounding stone for today. The grounding stone is just a stone that we want to um, ground in. I, you know what? I feel like this no, it's showing up at the beginning of the week and then again at the end, says to me that um, like I feel like don't give in to this stuff that's working around you. Don't give in to this indecision. Don't give in to this sort of self-doubt and fear. Don't give in to this acting and feeling as if I'm blind. It's almost like you need to like commit to like making a move and and um, and um, trusting yourself. And even if making a move is, and this is gonna sound weird, but even if the decision is, is to not make a move right now, to pause like this card says for the moment, that is your decision. That is a move by not moving, right? But trust that if you don't move, that you're doing the right thing. You have to believe in yourself. The stone is family. So I'm gonna say this. This brings me, makes me think, we've not seen this stone before, but we're grounding in family like today, right? We wanna ground in a couple things. There's meaning in this family stone for a couple of different reasons. One is, is what have we ever inherited from our family? What sort of societal beliefs do we carry that self-limit us or make us doubt or put us in this position? that lead us to this place of sort of clouding our vision or our ability to see ourselves. There's a lot of things that come from our own family that may be incorrect or limiting, and we need to be 
aware of that. So if we can go back and look at some of that or pick through that and discard or release some of that, that would be great. The other aspect of this family card is go be around the ones that you love. Go, remember the beginning of the week was friends. I leave these out on my desk because so that they don't get re-pulled. So the whole week stones are on next to my computer here. So friends started it out. And this is about going to be around the family of one's choosing during this time because we're having a rough time right now. We're confused. We need to be around the people that we love, that love us, that support us, that don't limit us, that don't like put self-imposed beliefs upon us. Sometimes our actual birth family can do this more so than people that we know, you know, casually, right? So this is about like maybe digging through the information of our family of birth and blood and then seeking out the family of one's choosing because they accept us for who we are even if we are not 100% clear on who we are right now with this cloud and this blindfold we're figuring it out but the true family of one's choosing isn't going to judge us while we do that where our own family of blood may that is your forecast for today, guys. I hope you have a great day. Um, tomorrow will be the weekly for next week, and I will see you then. Please tune in. Please leave any likes, shares, comments, subscribes. Let me know how these forecasts are resonating. I hope to see you soon. Take care.